I'm working on my 99 Dodge three-quarter ton pickup truck and the radio just stopped working so the radio that was in it still lit up and everything but none of the stations were, were they're all just static AM FM didn't matter and I had another one of those radios the same thing out of another Chrysler I plugged that in and this one didn't light up or do anything at all I'm sure I could have found another one of these radios but instead of just putting one of these in it again I got all right so I bought a brand new radio here so this is it all right so let's install this this radio was supposed to fit this truck I'm noticing it's a little bit bigger but you know what I'm gonna make it fit that doesn't matter first step is to remove this old radio so um, this nice easy access dash makes it very easy to unplug everything so I got the radio and the antenna unplugged, so that's all that. So let's get, now I think this, I think you just pull that off. There we go. Oh. All right. definitely bigger all right so you can see this new radio it's a little too big for this hole so we're gonna have to uh, make this hole bigger It's pretty nice now, kinda, except for this piece. I don't really need that. I'll put this back. This is what we have for plugs. So the back of the radio has this thing here. So they gave you this plug for it. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's different than what was in the car. I always felt it was, I've seen plenty of times where people cut these factory plugs off. I always feel that's a mistake. So what I ordered the, um, I ordered the, the other end that plugs into that. So what I have to do now is take these plugs that I ordered that hooks into here and join it up with this plug that plugs into the radio. Looks like these uh, wires are actually labeled. It's printed right on them what it, what it is. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go with that. Kind of tempted to use wire nuts, but you know, I. In case it's wrong, but really the only way that it's ever works and stays working is to solder wires. So I'm just going to solder all these. But I hope the uh, labels are correct. I guess we'll find out. Jeez, is there no, is there no ground on this? So we got power antenna, left rear positive, so that's a speaker, right rear positive speaker, left front positive and speaker. These are all speakers. Dimmer, so that's for the uh, dash lights. Speaker. Huh. I guess that I guess there is no ground on this thing. Okay, so the ground for this radio is not in these two plugs. So I bet you that other radio was fine. The ground is that separate wire on the back.
right, that's every plug that's needed to make the radio turn on. Let's go see if it turns on. All right, this should turn it on. Oh, it's touch screen too, huh? Let's finish wiring this up. Okay, so for speakers, this truck's only got two speakers in it and I rewired it at one point. So these are the speaker wires here. And um, so there's no sense hooking up a bunch of wires that are doing nothing. So we gotta do these two wires and, is it the, all right, these two. Okay. All right, all right that's it, just these, these four wires. I just hooked up the other two speakers. So there's a bunch of unused wires here. Let me explain what these are. There's another four wires for speakers that aren't used. Actually, there's a few here that should maybe, we got key, key one, key two. Actually, I should look at the manual, see what these are. So that's another illumination, parking. What is parking? There's the ground, I'm using that. Reverse lights, now that's probably for the dash cam or the uh, rear camera which you don't really need because you can see really well out of the back of this truck. So it's not, uh, then we got power antenna, which I don't have an amplifier, which that's probably to turn on a auxiliary amplifier if you cared about having. All right, so let's, uh, let's see if this thing plays music now. Oh, you know what? The antenna would probably help. Let me plug that in. This thing's working fine. Um, the next step, let me get this mounted in here. So they, they just gave you these mounting brackets. You know, they said it fits this truck. You know, they probably should have said can fit this truck. If it fit the truck, you would just screw it. See, see this radio, see this radio fits the truck. It screws right in here, it's the right size. This one can fit the truck. That's all right. I'll make it work. All right, so these brackets got to go on the sides. So let's pull it out. Just mount this bracket like the same depth of the mounting screws on this thing. Right about there.
like, well, that looks pretty damn good to me. Um, it's in there. Dash pieces back on. All right, well, I'm calling this a job done. Um, you know, I'm just keep this video nice and short. So, yeah, so it's in here. There's like a bunch of different ways to get music out of this thing. You can use the Bluetooth, you can use the FM radio, you can use an auxiliary cord, SD card, USB memory stick. It does hands-free telephone stuff, which is pretty nice. You know, when the phone rings, you can just answer automatically with this and just talk. And you don't have to touch, take your hands off the wheel. So that's pretty nice. It, it's got a bunch of nonsense features, like you can watch DVDs and stuff on this thing. I mean, really, they crowbarred so many features into this thing, it's crazy. But, you know, it was pretty cheap, so, uh, you know, I, I bought it. Um, it's also got this reverse camera that it came with, and I'm tempted to install this, but I don't feel like digging for the reverse wire in the truck wiring, because um, I'm, I'm sure I could find it. It'd probably take an hour, 45 minutes to get this hooked up. But you know what? There's really good visibility in this vehicle backing it up, so... I don't feel like that's necessary now if this was in a dump truck or something where you're only relying on your mirrors you can't just look out the back window i think this would be pretty nice i may even consider installing this radio in in one of my dump trucks to see how that goes so um so yeah i'll put a link in the description uh for for this radio and all the tools and stuff i used um a few things i like about it right away it's got an actual knob for the volume instead of a push button you know that's a big complaint i have with a lot of aftermarket radios the face plate doesn't come off of it because i've had a bunch of aftermarket radios where it just that breaks because it's stupid um you know it hope i didn't drive with it at night you know another complaint i usually have with aftermarket radios is they'll be glowing like the, the sun and you can't turn them off and it's like glaring right in your face so a lot of the times i'm just i rip the pull the face plate off of it because it's so so bright or i'll put something over it i don't think this one's going to be incredibly bright um is there a way to dim it let me see is even dim look at this oh look at that it's even got a dim button how nice is that? It doesn't dim these though. They don't seem like they're going to be too bright. All right, well, uh, time will tell how this radio is, but you know, right now it's, uh, you know, I got music in my truck again, so. And I want to comment on like the process I took for installing this radio too. Now, in the past, I've seen people where they use like dashboard tools to like take dashboards and stuff apart. And you know what? I hate working on dashboards. They're just made out of garbage plastic. So whenever I do it, I'm just kind of smashing everything apart and, and back together again. Um, and I just feel that's just so much more fun. Um, a, a funny thing, you ever change a heater core in a vehicle like this? The dealer, they, they say it's like an eight hour job of removing all kinds of craziness. It's like impossible to do. My friend's heater core went and you know, you need a heater core. You can't really drive the truck without it because the windows freeze up in the wintertime. So we, we just took sawzalls and hammers and just dug dug our way through the dashboard to find that heater. And we got it. We changed that thing in like 45 minutes. We zip tied, duct taped, and glued it all back together. It was good enough. You know, I, I can't believe the auto companies get away with building autos like this. I, I mean, this is just like garbage plastic over-engineered together. It's so stupid. I mean, this dashboard should just be a straight aluminum panel, you know, with all the instruments mounted into it so you can easily access the back of it and service it when you need to. This is nice with the top smashed out of here. It's really easy to work on stuff because you can just get right in here and do whatever you've got to do. So this piece missing here, I don't even care that this is missing. I kind of like it that way, so. All right, so I just want to take this for a drive quick to see what it's like with this map feature. So. So that's pretty nice. I like that it says the speed. It shows you where you are. And I also like that it's telling you the box numbers you're near. I've never seen another GPS do that before. You know, if you're looking for a certain address, even if you don't, like, you're not even using the GPS or whatever, it's still telling you the box numbers. How awesome is that? It's got the number on the left, the odds, and then the evens on the right. Um, yeah, dude, for the price of this radio, I don't know, you know, I obviously I've only had it five minutes, but 
I like it so far.